A lot of things that people are talking about here on Mackinac Island, and that includes taking a look at our cities and how they're doing and their economic development. One city in particular that people are focusing on is the city of Flint. It was five years ago this spring that the city changed its water supply, and that triggered the Flint water crisis. And joining me now is Tim Herman. He's the CEO of the Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce. Tim, of course, it's always good to see you Thanks again. For me. And Phil Hagerman, he's the CEO of SkyPoint Ventures. Phil, Hi, it's nice good to, to see here. you. You know, um, and we talk about how is Flint and how is the recovery of Flint going, not just with pipes in the ground, but really with economic development, growing business, making sure people feel comfortable staying, living, and growing in the city of Flint. So I, I'm going to start with you, Tim, and tell us, how is Flint doing? Flint's doing great. Um, we've got a lot of momentum. Uh, there's a lot of development going on. You know, quite frankly, we've done the unthinkable, right? Over the last five years, we've taken a bad water source, and now it's one of the best water sources in the country. And so, um, you know, we've got lots of development going on, lots of downtown development. Uh, and uh, I'm sure Phil will tell you a little bit about his project as well on, on mm -hmm. development. Okay, and working together. You know, you say that we now have one of the best water supplies um, in the country. Is there still a very hard perception problem for well, people who live in the city about trust again? Trust. You know, you, know? Uh, you know, can you trust government? Can you trust the experts? Right. Right. And so, um, you know, we're getting over that. And uh, we're no longer in a crisis. We're in recovery. And so... Um, I think we're on the right path, and uh, I think we've got about a couple thousand more pipes to, yeah. to fix. Mm -hmm. And uh, once those pipes uh, get fixed, uh, I think, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be really good. At least it'll be another large step, large step forward in, in recovery. Phil, yeah. I, how would you characterize when you say, how is Flint doing? Yeah, I think Flint is great, but I want to piggyback on one of the things that Tim said, because not only are we in a recovery mode, but we're in a collaboration level that I think we've never seen in Flint. As a businessman on the outside looking in, you always want the city to be able to move as a unit, and no city ever does, right? right. We know that. But with the work that Tim's done and the mayor really getting her legs and feet underneath her, really starting to own the city right now, we've got the city council, uh, the chamber, the mayor, working together better than ever before. So me as a businessman in the community that wants alignment from my government, I've got a better alignment than I've had in all the years I've been in Flint You know, right it's now. interesting that you say that. So how do you achieve that? Because I'm sure there's a lot of other cities around the state yeah. that could say, well, wait a minute, how, how do you achieve that synergy between government and municipalities, which sometimes can move a little bit slower, yeah. and from business saying, hey, we need to move fast and we need to invest in this way? Well, we're forward together. We, you know, we come, the mayor and the, the county commissioners and the business community have all come together now. And uh, we've got a project we call Forward Together. And it's a, a writing the new script for economic development in Genesee County. And, you know, you've never had the city, the county, and the business community coming together like we've yeah. come together. Yeah. You know, that, that, that brick wall down the Saginaw Street is now being, you know, bulldozed away. Uh, and everybody is together. Everybody's collaborating. We've got the best partnerships we've ever had in the city of Flint. And, and you know, Tim, it's not just about the, you know, um, the city and, and the county and, and the chamber. It's also about the north side of Flint and the east side of Flint and the downtown of Flint. And it used to be when the downtown started to thrive and some of the outer communities were struggling a little bit. It's like, well, wait a minute, is that the right way to go? And now I think everybody realizes we need a strong downtown, but we need to bleed off and spread some of that out into the community. And again, I see through the chamber's good work and the mayor's good work. I see that happening, and while we're probably not a perfect city yet, right, um, I, I see more of that than ever before. And for me as a businessman in Flint, it sets the stage, right? It allows me to be more comfortable with investments from a long-term basis. When I see a culinary institute of 13 to $15 million across from me, a $38 million capital theater development, one of the most beautiful theaters in Michigan, if not the country, um, and new apartments going in all within, you know, a, well, I'm not a very good golfer, but all within a pretty good drive <laughs> yeah. from where I'm at. And um, a new hotel. Yeah, and, and a new hotel. I can drive one to the hotel, I yeah, think. Yeah. Um, it really gets the business people excited and ready to try and figure out how we can do more. How do you decide on what investments are taken? And then does your investment also spur others to say, well, if Phil is doing this and he is investing, um, then I'm going to come along board? Well, we, we try and do a little of that. When I first bought the buildings in downtown Flint, and I'm really blessed, I own actually the original offices of General Motors. The Dryden building ended in 1902 and 1908. I think Billy Duran's office was on the, on the second floor, wow. overlooking Saginaw Street. 
We bought that building with the idea that we wanted the world to see that other money was coming into Flint. Uptown Development and the Chamber and a group had kept the lights on and kept the city driving for a long time, but it takes more than one organization or one group. And we came in with the hope that others would follow. And we were just one organization, but we refurbished a business that was almost empty. And then the building next door where our innovation center, the Ferris wheel is, was dark for 36 years. Right? I had a thousand pigeons in the building. Those are the only inhabitants for over 30 years in the <laughs> building. And so when you start seeing that activity, and we're now 90% full, a year and a half after we opened the building, we're at about a 90% occupancy rate in that building. We have 67 companies that have shingles in the building uh, that are in downtown Flint right now. So, you know, just success begets success. We followed a good run, and we're bringing some other things on board, and it's really, we're just part of it, but it's exciting. How important is having an incubator like that, the Ferris wheel, yeah. uh, in, in, as part of redevelopment and making sure that people who think that they maybe want to start a business but don't know exactly know how to do it or need that kind of guidance and the capital to be able to start something. Yeah, the vibrancy of the Ferris wheel and the 100K ideas that Phil yeah. and his team have put together is just amazing. Um, you know, to, to have the University of Michigan Flint kids, the Kettering kids, you know, the Mott Community College kids all come into that facility as well as entrepreneurs that have been in their garages, quite frankly, uh, tinkering. But, um, you know, what's happened in downtown Flint and the surrounding area, General Motors, you know, build a 1.2 million square foot customer care facility in Genesee County, spent $65 million. Magna Electronic, $50 million. A hotel, $37 million. The Mott uh, College just put a culinary school in downtown Flint, you know, another $18 million. The Capitol Theater, $37 million. The apartments that we're building in downtown, which is another $18 million. So the momentum is there. I don't know how we figured out. We just you know, yeah. if, if, if there's a, a, a building, Florida, we, we, well, we, you're opening to figure it out. And very different from the city that I worked in. I actually worked in yeah. Flint as a reporter for um, for two years from 98 to 2000. What are some of the challenges, though? Because this sounds wonderful. I mean, I'm hearing investment, investment, investment on all different kinds of scales. But when you sit, Phil, and you say, all right, what's our next steps going to be? What yeah. are some of the challenges that you're yeah. anticipating? Well, one of the great challenges, and I actually smile when I hear it all the time, but people are complaining all the time about parking. Now, parking in Flint's not bad still. It's probably easier to park than any other big city. Right. But people used to be able to find a parking spot in front of the door they were walking into. And yeah. now they've got to walk a block or they've got to walk two blocks. We've got plenty of parking still in the city of Flint, but it's not as much as it was before. And so that's a great problem to have. And I think from there, it's a case of us getting intentional as a city. And again, there's lots of programs through the chamber. The Mott Foundation has been incredibly supportive for us to build a pathway. And so we're looking at our streetscapes now and determining, you know, should we close this street and, and make it a boulevard? Should we move the street from a one-way to a two-way? And right now, I think we're being very intentional. And I think that's Flint's goal in the next year to two is let's be really intentional with some of the strategy we have because then in years three, four, and five, we've got the prep in place. With outside business help, with the capital, working with the government, and then also asking people what they'd like to see down there. The fact that you have all of those pieces together yep. is yep. really is really amazing and invig invigorating to see. Um, I'm going to ask you, Tim, and leave it with you. Um, what do you want to get a message here to people up on Mackinac about Flint right now? Well, I'll tell you what. If you haven't come to Flint, you haven't been there in a while, come on down. I'll pay your hotel uh, room and uh, visit because once you're there, you're, the perception changes. Uh, you know, Flint is a great place to visit. We have the best cultural center in the Midwest. Uh, you know, they're building a brand new charter school in the cultural center, the Charter Academy. You know, another $34 million project. Um, but come see Flint will definitely change their perception of what Flint really is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching the progress. Thank you, gentlemen, both of you, for coming Thank and you. sharing with that. We cannot Thank wait you. to see how Flint continues to move forward.